Hey everyone, Joey here. And today we're gonna to take a deep dive look at the Ambernic front end on Android as a beginner's guide. So I was actually shocked that there isn't a lot of videos on this. Well, not really. Other front end options are definitely better like Digisho or Emulation Station or Beacon Launcher and so on. But I know there's a lot of you that use the default Ambernic front end right out of the box. And so this guide is going to apply to those people as well as a ton of different devices, basically any of the Android Ambernic devices because they all use this front end. But for today's video, I'm gonna use the new Ambernic RG557 just because I have it. So let's start with the basics. If you happen to buy your Ambernic device with an extra SD card with games on it, then out of the box, your front end will be mapped and set up already. Now, for those of you that are in that scenario, you can feel free to skip to the next timestamp unless you're curious about how to set up a new SD card for the future and all that sort of thing. It is still helpful information. Now, you don't actually need an SD card. You can store ROMs right on the device if you'd like, and it'll work with the front end, but most people do buy an SD card, so I'll show you that route. Feel free to follow along and just use the internal storage if you don't want to use an SD card. Now, the first thing that we do need to set up is our SD card. And there's two ways that you can do this. If you don't have the device yet, and you wanna set up your SD card ahead of time, you can connect it to your PC using an SD card reader, find it in your file explorer, right click the card, format, choose XFAT, default allocation size, give the SD card a name if you like, and then push start. This is because you do need an XFAT formatted SD card for your device to recognize it. Now, alternatively, if you don't have a PC, wait for the device to arrive, pop the SD card in, and you should see or you might see a notification for it. You can tap it and then choose portable storage and format it. Otherwise, if you don't get that notification, head to Android settings, storage, Choose the SD card from the drop down menu, three dots top right, format and format SD card. If you ever get a notification asking if you want to set it up as a portable storage, you do. Never format it as internal. Now, in both scenarios, after formatting, you can go ahead and create a ROMs folder just at the top level of the SD card. And you can do this right on the device if you want using the Files app or just on the PC. It's up to you. Now inside of that ROMs folder, you're gonna to wanna to create system folders. These can be any name you want. You can see how I'm doing it on screen. So GB for Game Boy, GBA for Game Boy Advance, all that sort of thing. But the general idea is you wanna create folders for each game system. Then you wanna throw your games into those folders. I'll leave a link in the description for the whole games topic because you're gonna need some games for this guide. And that's a bit outside of what this guide is for. We're talking mostly about the front end today. Okay, so at this point, you have your SD card that came with the device, or you have a new branded one with a ROMs folder set up, your systems inside and all of your games, or you're just doing it on the internal storage. In either scenario, we're ready to continue. Go ahead and jump into the front end. And there is two ways that you can do this. You can swipe down from the top and then tap RG Launcher, or you can hold the R button on your device. Go ahead and click the confirm button for it to start the setup, and it's gonna load you into RetroArch, most likely. Allow all the pop-ups and do everything it says, and then when you get into the RetroArch menu, just scroll down and quit RetroArch. You're now gonna be in the Ambernic front end. And if you're here using the SD card that came with the device, then you're likely to see all of your games and everything already. Now for the rest of us that haven't added it yet, all of it's gonna be empty for us. So we have to tell the front end where our games are, but we'll do that in a bit. First, go ahead and push select, then head to settings and then emulator selection. In this screen, you can pick and choose which systems to show in the front end to just clean it up a little bit. So for me, I'm just gonna hide all of the systems that I don't have games for, just so I can make it look nicer on the home screen and it's not all bloated with systems that I don't have. Now, if you head back to settings and then theme style, you can try the different themes available to make it look nicer if you want. 
I'm going to leave it on the default one, but it is your preference what theme style you want to use. Now we're ready to tell the front end where our games are. So jump into a system. I'm going to start with NES. Push select and you're going to get a new menu. The first is asking, okay, for our NES games, which emulator do you want to use? And you can leave this as default if you don't know what you're doing, but otherwise, if you happen to know which core or emulator you want to use, you can change this. Otherwise, let's head to the top and over to ROM setting. Now, this is where we have to tell the front end where our NES games are. I'm going to delete the path that's already there because I'm using a brand new SD card and that path doesn't really exist. But if you're here using the SD card that came with the device, you don't want to delete that path because it likely is working if you saw your games. Now click the plus icon and Android is my SD card name. Then I'm going to go to the ROMs folder that we created and I'm going to select the NES folder. For you, if you're using the internal storage, just head there and select it there. Then go ahead and click start searching for games. If we head back, you should now see all of your games are there ready to be launched. If you highlight over a game and push X, it'll favorite it. If you push A, it's going to launch the game. And you can get back if you push the back button on your device to open RetroArch's menu, then just go to quit to exit. You can use L2 and R2 to move along the tabs at the top for recent, all, sort, and favorites. And lastly, start will open a search menu. Okay, so we did NES. Let's do one more with Super Nintendo. But you're going to have to repeat all of these same steps for each system that you have. So again, it is the same steps. We're going to open SNES, push select, head to ROM setting, add the path to our SNES games folder, and then click start search so that it can find them. Repeat all of these steps for each system that you have so you can load up all your games. Now, quick tip. If you push select on the home screen, you can see rec and fave for recents and favorites. It is a quick way for you to load up your recent games or your favorited games. Now, let's say that you want to add or remove some games and you want them to be scanned and added into your system list. You would usually do this in the files app if you want to delete some games there or you add them there, but they won't automatically update in the app. So go ahead and push select, head to tools, then scan ROM on TF card to update your list. Last topic of discussion, and that is box art. You might have noticed there is no option for scraping box art, and that's just another limitation of Ambernix front end. There is a convoluted way using Screen Scraper on your PC, generating a game list on XML file, and using that program to scrape all of your artwork, but it is very lengthy. What I'm going to do is put the instructions on my website, and I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to go down that route. But I would probably suggest that if you want all of those functionalities to just use Digishow or Emulation Station or Beacon Launcher as your options. But otherwise, for the rest of you that want to use Ambernix front end launcher, hopefully this gave you a quick crash course on how to actually use it, how it works, and how you can make the most of it. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about handhelds. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.